So in Science of Mind, we emphasize that we all live within this one life, this one infinite, boundless, limitless life of God, that we all exist as finite emanations of the infinite, and that the more we sense God's nature within and around us, the more we call it forth into expression in our lives. So being part of an infinite source of good, there are infinite ways that we can experience and express God's nature of love, of joy, of beauty, of wholeness, of abundance, of health, peace, all kinds of goodness. You know, there's no point, no point in this human lifetime or beyond, because we believe that, you know, being part of God, God is limitless, God is eternal, we continue on beyond this life, continue to evolve. And so throughout eternity, there will be no point where we will exhaust our ability to experience goodness in new ways, because infinity can never be depleted. So that's really, really great news, isn't it? I mean, we can never deplete that source that we're a part of, you know, of its goodness. We can always tap into it to experience it. So it's really wonderful to know that until we find ways to make that problematic. Have you ever found yourself overwhelmed by too many choices? That there's just, there are all these possibilities. I, I, I don't know which way to go. And then you get paralyzed. It's really not an uncommon problem in humanville. Studies have actually shown that in many cases, people with fewer choices tend to be happier than those with many. Isn't that interesting? That people with fewer choices often are happier than those with a lot, considering, you know, ability to consider many, many, many possibilities. Now, what we would emphasize in the science of mind is that it's not the fact that there are many choices that's the problem. Because then we'd be saying that there's something wrong with God's nature being infinite. That's not the problem. Any unhappiness we experience in our lives is a byproduct of us looking at things in a limited or a negative way. So there's some negative perception that we have about having infinite possibilities that's creating a negative experience for us. And so I wanted to break it down to, I think there are two basic mindsets that get in the way. And one, I think, is the most fundamental error thought that we fall into over and over and over again along our human journey. And that is the idea that our happiness, our well-being is contingent on that choice that we make, you know, that possibility that we're considering as we consider many, many possibilities that we have to make the right one in order to be happy. You know, that there's some worldly condition that is going to make us happy, and we better pick the right one. There is no right one, and the biggest error thought behind that is that the world is never our source of happiness and well-being. Any worldly conditions that we currently enjoy come out of that invisible essence of God's nature, that nature of love, that nature of joy, that nature of peace and abundance and wholeness, any way that we're experiencing love in our lives, any way that we're experiencing joy or abundance came out of that essence of joy, love, or abundance in us, finding a way to express itself outwardly, bringing itself into manifestation. But we fall into this trap over and over again of thinking, well, when I manifest a certain experience in my life, then I'll be happy. And the minute we say that, we're already creating a negative experience for ourselves because we're saying, I need that thing in the world, or I need to find that right thing in the world 
in order to be happy, which tells me that right now I'm not complete. Right now I can't be totally happy. So right there, we've started to create a negative, um, lacking type of thinking, which creates negativity in our lives. Now, that doesn't mean that we don't look at possibilities of how God's nature could take form. So it's not that we don't look out there and consider all the different possibilities that that nature of God in us actually seeks to do that. There's this vibration of love that's scanning, you know, the many possibilities and finding that perfect outward experience of how to express itself through us in our finite um, expression of itself. However, you know, we just want to remember that anything we discover in the outer world as a way to experience love came from the inner world of God's nature within us. Nothing in the world is our source of good. When we operate from that perspective, we can have a sense of the good we're seeking already exists within us vibrationally. And it probably, you know, the love that we're seeking in some new form exists in other forms in our, love, uh, in our lives right now. And we're just looking at the different possibilities out there of some new way that it can come forth and deciding to move in a certain direction that feels like, okay, that, that looks like a nice way for this vibrational quality of love or playfulness or uh, abundance to manifest in my life. When we're coming from that place of, it's something within me, it exists in my life already in different ways, and now let's look at some other possibilities. And even if we see many, 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 but then we just sit with that vibrational tone and then find the one that resonates with us the most, we're not coming from lack. We're coming from this um, mindset of this will be fun for now, and then there'll be more to come after that. That's a great mindset to be in. Now, I've, when I find myself falling into this idea of, you know, having to find the perfect right choice or feeling overwhelmed, um, you know, by all the possibilities or whatever, I go back to, isn't that interesting? I really think I have the kind of mindset that I would like to have in all areas of my life that I work on uh, establishing in more areas of my life uh, when I'm traveling. You know, when I travel, which I know you really hear most about when I go to France, but anywhere I go, I love to explore new places, you know, try new adventures. And I go with a sense of, I'll enjoy the experience of exploring something new. It doesn't mean that I'll necessarily resonate with everything that I find. I may go to some place and say, oh, I would never want to return there. I just didn't find it to be at all the same kind of experience others have found it to be. But something in me feels very fulfilled that I explored it. And so I still feel a joy of having tried it out to see how I felt about it. You know, I, I love seeing all the possibilities and feeling that joyous, adventurous part of me saying, okay, for now, let's try this, and then let's try this and that. And when I travel, I think I have this idea that's very clear that I can't see it all. I'm not going to see it all. And I'm not, I'll be honest, there are times that I might start to feel a little bit anxious, like, oh, let's see, you know, there are all these different things, I won't have enough time, what am I gonna do? But very quickly, I just move to what feels like the most fun, most adventurous thing that I would like to do now? What resonates with that experience I'd love to have on vacation? And I'll very quickly find the things that I want to do in that now moment. And the fact that I couldn't do the others just leaves me with a sense of, I can come back. There's going to be more to explore. If I really enjoyed this place, I'll come back and, and explore it again. So what that translates to, I think, in our lives and how we 
or how I get to that mindset that I would want to pass on is uh, actually something that Ernest Holmes, our founder, promoted a lot. As you know, we work a lot with affirmations and our spiritual mind treatment, our prayer work, our you know study. But when we're doing, when we're declaring some greater good to bring it into manifestation in our lives, when we're declaring that that is a possibility, it's not only a possibility, it's coming forth into my life today, the most important component of that is to feel the vibrational quality of that experience that we're seeking, of that possibility that we're uh, looking for. And that vibration of God and feeling it and feeling it as already accomplished is what helps us to recognize that possibility that would allow for that vibration of spirit to be fulfilled. It's that thing that breaks through, that feeling that is already there, because it is within us as a spiritual vibration, and feeling it is already accomplished, even if we don't know exactly what that's going to look like, but just feeling ourselves in that place of being in that greater experience of love or joy or peace or harmony or whatever it is that we're seeking to call forth into some greater expression, feeling that breaks down the beliefs that, you know, say that's not possible or it has to be a certain way. And it helps us to see and accept the form in which that greater good can come into our lives. I don't know how many of you tuned in uh, to our service on Sunday, but um, we had two members of our congregation, now that we're in our Journey of the Heart program, uh, to share uh, a little bit about you know, why science of mind is important to them and why they contribute to our community. Uh, it was uh, Fern and Jay Saltzman. And I loved when Fern was sharing the story about a time when she was just trying to find some direction, like a career for herself, and she kept declaring, over and over and over again that this perfect right opportunity was showing up for her and she had ideas about what it would feel like. Even when she was talking about it, even though it's a past experience, I could feel her vibration connecting with that quality that she was seeking to experience because it's still alive in her, it's alive in all of us. And you know, it was that. She didn't know what it would look like as she shared with us, but then she shared how all of a sudden, one day, she said, I'm going to get the answer, and she did, because she felt it, and she kept, with the affirmations, she kept feeling the possibility and got to see the one that was right for her. Instead of just thinking about, oh, there's so many ways, and I don't know, and it's so confusing, feeling that vibration of the experience helped her to recognize and step into the way it could manifest for her at that time. That, I, I was really uh, inspired by that sharing. And the nice thing is when we're coming from that point of view, when we are feeling it within ourselves as something that's always there, that it, we're going to experience in some new way outwardly, we know that when those outer experiences come to an end, because everything in this dimension is limited time-wise, everything comes to an end eventually, guess what? That vibration of spirit is still there to be called forth and experienced in a new way. Now, the other problematic mindset around possibilities, I think, is from a human perspective, we can recognize that in the realm of infinite choices, there are some that can have negative consequences. In the realm of infinite possibilities of things we can do, one would be jump off a cliff. I don't recommend it. I don't think we would like the consequences. And throughout our lifetimes, we're learning about human actions that can have uh, negative consequences from the time we were little 
we start to learn, don't put your hand on the you know, burner, on the stove. Um, you know, and we're learning how to navigate and circumvent um, you know, taking actions that will have negative consequences. That's a form of good stewardship, which is part of our divine nature. So as we consider possibilities, we do tend to look and see, you know, how might that have a negative consequence if I move in that direction? But that can lead to us focusing on and projecting all the possible challenges that uh, you know, a choice to pursue a certain possibility might bring up, which can be paralyzing. You know, and so first off, let me just tell you right here, if you're the person that's going, well, if I do this, this might happen, this might happen, this might happen. Okay, that is helpful to just consider, are there negative consequences? What might I want to do to adjust, you know, my way of thinking and maybe consider a slightly different possibility? That's all very good. But if we want to run every possibility of what could go wrong, guess what? You can't. Because, again, possibilities are infinite. So we start with feeling the vibration of God's love or joy or adventure, whatever it is that we're wanting to experience more fully. And then we consider the possibilities of how they can manifest in our lives. And it's OK, as I said, to contemplate you know, what challenges might come up if I go down that road. As I consider that possibility, something feels right about it, but what might I not be considering? And, you know, that's helpful. But I think we also need to know that if something doesn't turn out the way we expected, guess what? That nature of God is greater than whatever we're facing as a challenge that came up as a result of moving you know, exploring that possibility. All it is is a learning experience. We still have that divine nature to tap into to make good of our choice. So it'll just be a learning experience that moves us closer to the possibility that suits us the best in this moment. So I would say that as we consider possibilities for ourselves to experience greater joy, greater fulfillment, to bring forth greater peace into the world, as Mary sang about. Let's remember first to acknowledge the myriad ways that that quality of God that we're seeking to experience more fully is present in our life right now. Let's align with the vibration of that quality of life, uh, quality of God, and let that vibration reveal the possibility that is the most appropriate for us to pursue in the now. And as we do so, let's rejoice in knowing there's going to be more beyond this one possibility that we're exploring. So let's take a moment to turn inward. And I invite you to call to mind any area of your life where you're seeking some greater experience of good, and maybe you feel unclear or overwhelmed by the possibilities, confused. And so whatever quality of God you feel you would experience more expansively if you pick the right possibility. If it showed up and you were clear and you moved in that direction, would you experience more love, more joy, more peace, more abundance, wholeness? And allow yourself to sit in the felt reality of that experience to feel that vibration of that quality of God expanding and being fulfilled. And take a moment to recognize and feel grateful for it being right there at the center of your being. And then also consider and be grateful for the ways it is showing up in your life today. 
It's just seeking a greater, more expansive expression of itself. And now allow yourself to feel that vibration attracting to you or revealing to you the perfect outer experience, the perfect possibility for it to be fulfilled. And acknowledge that this vibration of God's nature will always be there, not only to reveal the greatest possibility for you right now, but the next one after that and beyond. It will always be there to guide you to that perfect next possibility. And so from this place, let's join together in knowing that that one life, that one power, that one presence that I call God is ever present throughout all time and space and beyond, that its nature permeates the universe. It is the essence of God that animates my being, that animates every form of life, every part of creation. And so knowing that God is in all places and all things, let us know that this one life of God is eternal, changeless, it is birthless, deathless, and therefore we as extensions of it are birthless and deathless. That all change that happens in this time and space dimension is simply the human process, but that nature of God in us is always there to be called forth in some new way. And for those who are experiencing any sense of uneasiness around any change in their lives, we know that this truth comes forth. We know as well that this nature of God that permeates creation is perfect, whole, and complete, is a vibration of health and wholeness and vitality that lies in each and every one of us. And so it is out of this vibration that healing of all human ailments is revealed. It is out of this vibration that the perfect healing is revealed, the pathways for the healing of the pandemic that is being faced right now across the globe, that every human ailment is absolutely changeable. It is temporary. And that nature of God, of perfect health, reveals itself. And the dis-ease and discord drops away. We know as well that this vibration of spirit is infinitely creative. It is always seeking to give of itself unto itself through us. And as we open to it, we're all guided to the perfect right careers or activities through which God can give of, of itself in our own unique ways and that we feel fulfilled and absolutely abundantly sourced and supplied. Let us remember that this vibration of spirit is limitless and therefore any experience of lack that we might be experiencing is a human idea being imposed upon that nature of God. And as we are willing to know the truth together right now, that we are one with the infinite source that gives beyond need to us and that we get to enact its nature of generously giving back to life, that we see an expansion of that capacity to give and receive in all areas of our lives. And we remember that that nature of God is one of pure love. And as we open to it, any experience or relationship that does not reflect harmony or love or discord, there's a pathway for healing. That love holds all of us in a state of unconditional love. And as we open to that, we find ourselves 
moving into more loving relationships with ourselves and those around us. And so knowing that that vibration of love is always for greater good, let's honor it by setting our own individual intentions for greater good in our lives. And so whatever these intentions may be, greater good for ourselves, for loved ones, for situations in the world, let's remember they are coming from that infinite source out of which all good comes into being. And as we know that God is at the center of each of these situations, good is revealed. And together we declare, I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. Where? And so we bless our church, we bless all churches everywhere, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God, knowing that they all lead to the same God, the same truth. And it's with a heart just filled with gratitude for knowing this truth that I release this word knowing it is so, it is done, I let it be, and so it is. Together we say, Amen.